Now, the flooding in Central Texas left a lot of people shocked, not just by the damage, but how quickly it all happened. It raised big concerns about how this kind of extreme weather can really hit with little warning. Virginia Tech professor and hydroclimatology expert Dr. Craig Ramsire joining us live now this morning to help us make sense of all of this. Uh, good morning to you. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, it, it really is hard to, to make sense of this tragedy, especially when you think about all the lives lost. I want to ask you, though, from your perspective, what is it that made this flooding so intense? It happened so quickly uh, and really caught a lot of people off guard. Yeah, this was a particularly high impact flood, um, mo mostly due to the fact that we had really high rainfall rates. So a lot of times people think about the total amount of rain that fell on a particular place. Um, hydroclimatologists like myself, uh, we really focus on the rainfall rate. So how quickly was it falling for how long? And so in this case, we had uh, really high moisture levels, which led to these really extreme rainfall rates uh, and really slow moving storms that tend to train over the same areas for a long period of time. And is this part of a larger trend that you all are seeing right now with climate, extreme weather? Um, and is this something that we could see in, in our area? I think is what a lot of people are, are wondering too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things about flash flooding is there's very few parts of the United States that are protected from flash flooding. Um, it's kind of a concern everywhere. And um, we've certainly seen in the scientific literature now for a few decades um, a lot of evidence that uh, warmer temperatures in the atmosphere would lead to more evaporation and higher moisture in the atmosphere. And that's that's kind of what we are now seeing play out in real time. And so unfortunately, this trend is not likely to change for the better anytime soon. What kind of infrastructure or preparation should communities start thinking about? It's unfortunate that it has to happen and, and that these thoughts have to happen after a tragedy like this. But is there anything that communities can start doing? Absolutely. I mean, I think um, anytime we have a, a, a devastating flood like the one we've seen, I think a lot of communities um, have an opportunity to kind of look at their own plans and, and think about what kind of preparedness they have in their own communities. Um, and I don't think people need to rely just on their local officials. So these are things, you know, there's easy things that they could be doing to make themselves aware of their surroundings. And so a lot of times people will see a stream perhaps in their backyard and not really understand um, what kind of volume of water could flow through that. And so just making yourself you're aware of kind of the threats around you and then having a plan in place. So um, where where is high ground in your location um, and thinking about ways in which you could get there really quickly. And so we're seeing it play out right now this morning. I mean, there's another flash flood emergency just north of Kerrville. Um, and so those those emergency uh the emergency responders are now probably being relocated to that particular flood. And so sometimes you may need to protect yourself. And uh, that's something that that anybody could do. And talk a little bit more. I know you touched on it, but what makes this so intense? I mean, some of the videos are just incredible, seeing entire homes just be lifted up and, and floating down the river. Um, what is it that is making this, this weather so extreme? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, in this particular case, um, down in Kerr County, you had a, a, a river, you know, each river has kind of its own personality in terms of how it'll behave to the amount of water that comes into it. And so this is a, a river that is pretty prone to flash flooding. But in this case, again, these rainfall rates were pretty unprecedented for that area. And so you get a massive amount of water that flows into the region um, and they have very th um, thin soils that aren't particularly good at absorbing that water. Uh, and so you saw just massive amounts of water entering the river very rapidly. And so it had a really rapid rise. And so each river is a little differently here in the mid Atlantic. We, we, we have kind of a different um, soil types and things like that that would maybe buffer us a little bit. Um, but but certainly we can see similar types of flash flooding here. Yeah, we know all of this is far from over in central Texas and certainly has a lot of communities across the country uh, now thinking about how they can prepare. We really appreciate your insight. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And our parent company, Tegna, has established the Tegna Texas Flood Relief Fund. We are raising money right now to support the ongoing and, and long-term response to the disaster in Central Texas. Just scan the QR code. It's on your screen right now. You can make a donation. Uh, we thank you for any donation you are able to make.